that uh, you know, people think you play for the national championship if you play in the last game, and I don't. Uh, you play for the national championship when you're in this tournament, and you have to win six games to win it. Um, the bracket is, is, is loaded at the top with Kansas, uh, Duke, Michigan State, Auburn being the fourth seed in that uh, group. It's a, it's a pretty darn good, uh, uh, from, a, from a standpoint of profile and national programs, and to be in the top four seeds in this bracket is a tremendous statement for you know, the regular season champions. Um, College of Charleston is, uh, they're a three-headed monster. They've got uh, uh, two great guards. Um, they play the point and the two, and they've got a great four man. All those guys can shoot threes and average over 17 points a game. So they have three great players and lots of other good pieces. Um, and uh, so we're going to get up and get ready for them. And and, uh, and then in the next game, you got uh, Chris Jans coaching at uh, Mexico State. He's a former Wichita State assistant to Greg, Jan to, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Marshall. And uh, so we're familiar with him. And, and then, of course, Clemson. We saw Clemson in the College of Charleston. In fact, both Clemson and Auburn got three straight days of looking at one another. And so, you know, if we happen to see them, we'll, we'll know a lot about them. So it takes two wins to get to Omaha in the Sweet 16. And, and so that's how, we'll, uh, that's how we'll approach it. When you've got a team that doesn't have NCAA tournament experience, what's going to be the message for them this week? I just think that... Um, um, you just take it, you, you play it like any other game. I mean, you, you try not to deviate too terribly much. Uh, we've been in tournaments before, um, and uh, and so I, I don't, we're not going to change. We're not going to change how we play. We're not going to change how we dress. You know, we'll probably travel out there a little earlier than we normally will, and we haven't been in San Diego, California for a game before. So um, try to keep it the same. Do you think you guys need to hit the reset button a little bit just with the way you ended the season and kind of the. Well, the, you know, worst loss of the season against Alabama. Yeah. What, what's your kind of thoughts? We've, we've lost four out of the last six games. Uh, we're two and four without Anthony McLemore. And the two wins were against, uh, you know, against Alabama and, and South Carolina. And so we, we clearly aren't as good without Anthony. Um, at the same time, you know, uh, I want them to think back to, you know, this is still a team that won the SEC. Um, this is still a team that has eight players that are all capable of playing well. Look, we, we had two or three guys play well against Alabama and nobody else. You can't win like that. We need, we need the eight guys that are out there playing to step up and be able to play. So from the standpoint of a reset button, the eight, the, if, if eight's going to be enough, eight guys going to bring it. And, um, and we play best when everybody contributes and we need more contribution from more guys. It can't just be the star power guys. And then, and then guys got to go back to doing what they do. You know, Bryce got to make shots. You know, Jared's got to play. Jared Harper, when he plays well, we win. That's a lot to put on your quarterback, but that's just the truth. And those two guys are going to be going up against College Charleston's two of their best players. So, um, yeah, I, I do think there's, there's an opportunity to hit a reset button here and see if we can get some of our mojo back. Like, for example, like the way Deshaun Murray played in that game. You could tell that Deshaun kind of hit a reset button at the SEC tournament knocked on some shots, played with a little bit more confidence, and if we could have had a couple other guys sort of step in there with him, we would have been in St. Louis longer. From the perspective of the matchup, Bruce, because you could have gotten somebody who was loaded with fours and fives, not to you know, give Bolton more material here, but on paper, a guard-heavy team would seem to be a better matchup for you than obviously the, the opposite. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say. It, it, I, I can't tell you how good the matchup is until I, pay, until I look at him. I, I, I haven't looked at him. Uh, yes, but but I don't see anybody in the first weekend that is built like you know either Alabama or Texas A&M or you know Kentucky. Those are the teams that we're going to see in St. Louis, Missouri, um, Georgia. Big, big, big physical teams. But they'll present us with other other challenges. But we've got to get back to playing our best basketball. We got to we got to get our identity in our in our man stuff and and, and our zone stuff. Um, and 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 again, it's all about making plays. But uh, we're prepared. We've been through. Uh, a gauntlet in the SEC. That's that's going to be part of my message. There's there's no team in this tournament that is more prepared than Auburn, as far as everything we've gone through, all the adversity we've gone through, all the challenges that we've gone through, uh, the quality of the competition. This team's prepared. Now, are we good enough at this time with these eight guys to pull it off? That's why we play the games. Beyond the X's and O's, Bruce, what did today mean? You've talked about the NCAA tournament. I think before you guys left for Italy. And yeah. You put it out there. Yes. But this is this is the destination point for your program for an initial. Hey, we're here. Yeah. Your perspective. I the perspective is is this. I did feel like this team could go to the NCAA tournament. I felt like we had enough guys returning, um, enough experience, 
uh, we had made a good enough run last year where we got close enough that we could taste it, but we didn't finish with free throws or defense or transition defense or rebounding or ending plays. And and to, to, the, to this team's credit, they we fixed a lot that was was ailing us. Um, you know, they can no longer say that the team in the SEC that hasn't been to the NCAA tournament the longest is is Auburn. That's no longer the case. And um, you know, for Charles Barkley to be able to call our name uh, was significant um, because um, he just tired of, 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 of having us not be competitive. And I think, frankly, you know, listen, Auburn is a school. What's happened to our school over the last, say, 15 years? I mean, it just keeps going in the right directions. Academically, with all of our programs, it's so tough to get into. It's just, it's a, I mean, it's one of the top public institutions in the country. And look at all of our other sports, men and women. Look at all the success in all sports. Look at the stability of the coaches. And men's basketball just hasn't been able to, you know, to uh, stand up. And I know when I came here, you know, I just, you know, one of, the, one of the things that Jay Jakes and I talked about, David Benedict and I talked about, is they were tired of Auburn basketball sort of being a ball and chain around the league. And, and, and I, you know, and I remember what, what, how we viewed Auburn. Those kids would play hard. And, 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 and it was always a tough place to play. But they, but, but they weren't going to, it was, you know, only one year I remember with Coach Lebo um, where we beat them in the semifinals, I think, of the SEC tournament in Tampa. They'd upset Florida where they were a real threat, where they were really, and, and, and now Auburn is competitive, competitive enough to win the league and go to the NCAA tournament. So, yes, it means a great deal to me from a historic perspective. Without giving away. Consider uh, going to contact practices for a couple of times this week. I think we might have one. I, I think the fact that we don't play till Friday, I think that we will we'll hit on Tuesday and hold our breath. But I I, I don't I got to get us if we're gonna get a reset, then we're gonna have to hit one day this week. Without giving away too much of preparation, because what goes into prep for an opponent like where you have some common opponents in Hofstra? Yes. Do you look at last five, last ten, do you look at those? They played Wichita at one point. Well, I'll give you an example. Like they, they beat Northeastern three times. Northeastern plays a zone very similar to ours. So we'll study that to see how they attacked it and what they did against it. Because what they did against that zone is going to be similar to what they're going to do against our zone. So that's how you approach it. Um, I've got three scouting teams. Chad Pruitt will lead one, Stephen Pearl will lead the other, and, and, and Harris Hadler will lead, lead the third. We have three teams that we have to play this week. I will have two of the teams working with me for at least the next 48 hours and focusing just on the College of Charleston. One of the teams will break off and, uh, and begin to work on New Mexico State, and I'll probably have one of my teams on Clemson from the jump.